The following is a fan based narrative. Please support the official release. Hey guys, if we reach a thousand likes, we'll be giving out two of our new shirts. All you gotta do is click like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Oh, talk about an abrupt intro. Also, is this now how letters get delivered? Because it just magically found its way here, and if it can do that, why do we even have the post office? And can we stop for a moment and just look at how extremely wealthy all the main six are? Rarity owns multiple high fashion stores, Applejack controls all produce, Twilight is a princess, and Rainbow Dash lives in a mansion. Friendship is magic? No, wealth is apparently magic. Rainbow Road Tripping. Yeah, no, that sounds more like a SoundCloud mixtape than anything else. Well, look at this! Starlight's here! And unlike in the other movie, the school is directly mentioned here. Meaning that for some reason, instead of leaving Starlight in charge, Spike was left in charge. But besides that, Starlight should still be extremely close with Twilight here, and doesn't even bother to see them all for say goodbye. How is this a race? Dash goes Mach 7! I just had to pack up a few books and papers to grade. Wait, you're bringing work to a festival? Yeah! It's supposed to be a non-stop butterama party! Being surprised the ponies is not a personality, he's just books, finds grading fun! Um, why aren't we going anywhere? Hmm, the basket's too heavy. My papers! Yeah, there's there's no way that amount of papers would have hold down this basket. Rainbow Dash wasn't even in the basket yet, and since she can go into it and have it be fine, that means the bag weighs more than Dash, which means Spikes does indeed lift. Dear Rainbow Dash, thank you for agreeing to be our guest at this year's famous Hope Hollow Rainbow Festival. No one else read the letter before agreeing to come. Did some pony mention something about a spa in... where is it we're going again? Hmm... You know, it's strange that we never heard of this festival before, especially since everything in the town is so well known. You've never heard of anything before and are still going without consulting any maps or history of the town. Shouldn't we be there by now? I thought so too. Maybe we should have turned left to that last cloud instead of right. Using constantly moving and non-permanent objects to guide you. Like I say, horses are in fact dumb. I really do spy a rainbow. The billboard somehow was built to go over the cloud layer. Actually, fuck, they're over the cloud layer. Exactly how are any of them breathing normally? Uh -huh. Welcome to Hope Hollow, home of the famous... So there's a random placard just here in the forest. Like, this isn't even by the town entrance. There's no goddamn way that these small pillars were supporting this huge billboard. I mean, this thing was going past the cloud layer. Also, we see in the ending, the pillars are like right next to the exit of the town, and now they're super far away. In fact, they have to trek through an entire forest that just simply disappears at the end. This hotel never charges them, and maybe if they did, they'd be able to afford repairs, because there's no way this is all from just a few years of disuse. You'll be all fresh and ready to see the mayor in the morning. Sleep tight. Also, she takes the room key herself. This feels more like a horror movie setting than an MOP film. Hard to tell on this light, but she looked a little gray, didn't she? The main six doesn't notice the literal lack of color. Ugh, it wasn't the worst night of sleep ever. <laughs> Definitely in the top three. Or would that be the bottom three? It would still be the top. That's not how lists work. Be looking at us. Maybe they recognize Rainbow Dash. How exactly does this mare and the window get in and out of here? The windows are boarded up, so did she just crawl over the side or? Looking at us. Maybe they recognize Rainbow Dash. Or Princess Twilight. That would make sense if this world made sense at all. This would be like the Prince of England walking around and no one caring at all. 
I think they're staring because we're the only part of this town that isn't gray. Later, we learn everyone's gray because no one talks to anyone anymore or is friendly. But clearly, there are plenty of couples and friends and even people who talk casually with one another as we see in these scenes. I thought the pie I baked was quite tasty. I didn't say it wasn't. You didn't say it was. <gasps> Watch where you're going. You don't own the sidewalk, you know. He never said hello to them, but apparently they do indeed talk. Well, look at that. Some pony's fixing up our balloon. How did they find the balloon? I mean, it was out in the middle of the forest. There was no one there. <laughs> well, stuff me in an olive and call me a pimento. No, I'm not going to do any of that, actually. Well, you're here, Alia. Welcome to the Hope Hollow Annual Rainbow Festival. Canadian or Wisconsin, whoever or wherever this accent is from, it gets owed extremely quick. And you must be... Sunny Skies, the mayor of this lovely town, and pleased as a poplar tree to meet you. We have 44 minutes left, and I am so incredibly bored. Maybe it's because it's the third or fourth time I'm watching this, but nothing happens here. There's no conflict that matters, no villain, no real lesson that it's learned, that isn't something that we've learned a million times in the show, and ultimately nothing here matters because this town would probably never be mentioned in reference again. Once your balloon's fixed up, Torque can take care of the billboard. Every pony, meet Torque Wrench, our town handy pony. What exactly is she blowtorching on a wooden balloon basket? Oh, well, of course she did. She's something, I'll tell you what. I'd be lost without her. I mean, the, the, the town would be. Yes, this B-plot happens a lot, and it's not interesting or surprising in the least. So, none of the butterflies are actually... Real? Oh, no. That's butterfly-phobic, Fluttershy. In 2019, a paper identifies as butterflies, and you better well respect that. And the resort hotel wasn't what it was cracked up to be, either. Except for all the cracks. None of these things are as pictured in your brochure. You got catfished by a town. You should feel bad. That was our town at the end of the rainbow. Yes, yes, I know, recolored Big Mac. I honestly wouldn't care if it wasn't for the fact that they do constant close-up shots on him, like, as if they're just trying to really hammer home the point that they just do not give a fuck. Passed it on to Dad, then it was my turn to make the pretty rainbows in the sky. So we're just gonna gloss over the fact that his dad just died prematurely or what then fences went up we lost track of our neighbors each year passing dimming spirits all around the happy days came to an end no pony had time to spend together in the town the whole premise of the town turning gray is based on the fact that people just stop talking to each other and somehow this caused them all to lose hope and something it never says what and none of this will ever be explained rainbow dash you were my last hope i figured if a pony of your stature came to town it would get every pony excited about putting on the festival again her stature no one even knew who she was, but not only that, you called her and didn't think to call one of her extremely accessible friends who are the ruler of Equestria. Here's the question, why did the map warn you about this huge friendship crisis? Is that still a thing? Did we just forget about that like the friendship journals, or the castle of the two sisters, or pretty much every other plot point that we've ever had in the show? The biggest challenge is getting your town interested in a rainbow festival and everything's so gray. I think if we can bring the color back, it'll solve everything. Isn't it more that the color coming back signifies that the problem in of itself is solved? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, if you don't mind, I, uh, I have a speech to work on. Again, no one cares about this B-plot. What? Rainbow does a sonic rainbow? To try to solve a problem? Who saw that one coming? Yeah, yeah that's all I got. Well, at least she admits that she's a one-trick pony. Yeah, rainbow, who can move at mock speeds, doesn't even bother to try to save these two falling children. 
president. Pickles the assistant president. Their names Barley and Pickles. I can see why this is the only time their names are ever brought up. No one sees the glowing bright blue windmill. I think some of this can be saved, but we'll need some fresh lumber. Okay, but if everything's gray, how do they fix the rainbow? All parts except for the bundle that got color should still be gray. And the paint should also be gray, because threads are still gray. The only other way is for everything to keep getting its color back, but shouldn't that have been brought up sooner if that was the case? I love ya! I love you so much! Your work, I mean, your designs, your taste, your eye for beauty... And cue the shipping. Also, I'm torn. On one hand, if they focus on about this pony's leg, it would be distilling her entire personality into being about the fact that she's missing a leg. But by not addressing it, I feel like there's a huge elephant in the room everyone's actively avoiding. They're the perfect canvas for me to fancy up. Isn't it a bit rude to say someone's designs are the perfect canvas to work on? Canvases are bland, blank, and uninspired. So Rarity's designs are so boring that they're the perfect design to work over? I mean, that's how I design things. I feel in my heart what the colors are. I mean, you can see that the colors are extremely faded, but it's pretty easy to work out a lot of those colors. You don't really have to feel what they are. I can't believe it. <laughs> God damn it, they even added a specific sound effect for her wooden leg, but it will never be brought up or mentioned. You like it? This room was in no way big enough that she didn't see her right there. We may be small, but we're well read. I make sure of it. Well, apparently not since no one's in here and it doesn't seem like anyone ever comes back here. Maybe if you didn't have it behind some sort of weird doorway. Did he really say that? <laughs> and skip the annoying B-plot. We're not interested. It's getting so a pony can't even walk down the street without being terrorized. Complains about no one talking to them later, and for some reason they're upset about it now. Cupcakes and pastries and fun, and we're gonna start with this pie! Let the taste test begin! Peaky steals her pie without asking. What kind of pie did you say this was supposed to be? Apricot? Are you sure? It's kind of... crunchy. As a pie would be, right? She sounds just like we always imagined she'd sound. Only 20% cooler! Again, we can stop overusing the 20% cooler thing. I get it, you're trying to wink to the fandom, but stop it. Just don't. Yes, sir! I mean, ma'am. <laughs> well, the rainbow mane does make it a bit hard to tell. Holy shit, the fan is still bright blue in the background, and no one notices it! Also, before we saw the town was encased in a bumble of gray, the area around it was still in color. But here, all the hills are still in monochromatic colors. With hardly any colors in this town, one apricot looks like another! What about that tree? Its apricots are big and juicy. And if you can tell they're right by the size, then by their size. Size has nothing to do with the color. What in Equestria is she doing? I haven't the foggiest dear. If only there was some apricots we could use! Teaching Business 101 for toddlers. These are grown adults who need to be taught this. In fact, they own their own business, so you would think they would know this. At a ladder, we can just pick it from your side of the fence. Um, yes, of course, this way. Not even sure where they're going since apparently their house is back the other way. I have a chatter. Uh, yes, I think this works. Just push this thing. So we're not going to talk about how this is a secret cave behind the store or bookstore or whatever this is supposed to be. But it's not like it holds secrets or anything. In fact, it's supposed to be readily accessible. So why hide it behind a false bookcase? Oh, didn't see you there. Sunny, I didn't know you were here. Again, no one cares about this B-plot. 
modifies whatever magic it uses, makes it stronger. So if we could rebuild it... ...and use one of the reversal spells I just read about... ...it could work to bring color back to the town! Every time she does this, she keeps getting more and more complex. And I keep on calling bullshit on each and every iteration. Even if we could get it working again, which is quite a tall order. Yeah, I could give her a go. With no instruction manual or even understanding of how it works, this is like a mechanic looking at a damaged nuclear reactor and going like, no, yeah, I can fix this. <laughs> Mm. Eating an entire pie in three bites. Absolute degeneracy. Mr. Huffington did all the baking. Mm. Inspired by you, Snookums. Yeah, okay. So, if he did all of the baking, why are you covered in white splotches? Unless... Well, here it is. Had to hoof some of the parts myself, but it's as good as new. You did this in less than a day with custom middle working parts. Whoa, did, did y'all see that? Of course, no one listens to the background pony. An orange scarf for Applejack, red leggings for Fluttershy. Ooh. Leggings, well, at least they know their audience. The blue goggles are for Rainbow Dash. And I think I have some that might match for you too. And she just happens to have color matching goggles for two people who weren't even known to be here. You were able to reverse the generator? The generator had nothing to do with it, and never did. Except it literally did this, and it is his fault. What did cause it? It's called hopeless magic. Bullshit! You can't just keep on making up magic. Every pony was already giving up on each other, losing hope. Then when the generator blew up, it must have been the last straw. It took all the hope out of the town for good. Well then, it's literally his fault. If it didn't blow up, they wouldn't have lost their last bit of hope. But also, what was the hope? If they just wanted to talk to each other, they could have talked to each other. They all actively chose not to talk to one another for some reason that's never explained. Petunia Petals, will you marry me? He goes straight to marriage, doesn't even bother the date. All that practice and training to fly slowly from one point to another. 